Hello. Today I'm going to talk about one of my most favorite topics, the subconscious mind. And I'm actually going to go into what it actually is and how can we talk to it from multiple different perspectives, both based in science and some of the more elusive cultural and traditional ways of understanding what it is and how we can program it. So if you're like me, <clears throat> maybe you've heard about this subconscious mind and that we have to rewire it, we have to reprogram it, it holds our traumas, it holds all of the things that might be holding us back. But it also includes hidden information and clues to our destiny and into our path. But how do we actually get there, um, this field of information? <clears throat> now. Interestingly enough, the subconscious mind, like I was just saying, has many different names and in, in modern psychology and modern science, it's recognized as the subconscious, but um, the Akashic records is another name for it. The morphogenic field in quantum physics is another name or biology. Um, and what it is, it's just referring to information. Where does this information of our lives, of our destiny, get put and how can we get to it? So I'm going to, in this video, talk through some of the ways that different cultures, both modern, so quantum physics and modern science, um, indigenous shamanism, yoga and Hinduism, and then more of a cognitive uh, psychology and neuroscience approach. I'm going to go through each of those uh, ways of understanding the subconscious and how we can connect them and hopefully one of them will resonate with you and help you really round out this understanding of what the subconscious mind is. And then from there, if we can talk to it, we really hold the power to healing our body and more than that. So Dr. Joe Dispenza, Dr. Bruce Lipton, these are people that have um, large bodies of work showing the power of the subconscious mind, the power of manifestation. Now we might call this a little bit new age, but the term new age in itself isn't bad, it's just new. We're starting to understand these teachings, these ancient teachings from a new perspective. And that's what I hope to give you today. There are a few layers to the subconscious mind that I would like to touch on today. The first one is the personal subconscious mind. So that is our own story, basically. So that lies in our upbringing, our childhood, mostly from ages zero to seven, when our beliefs about the world were being programmed into our nervous system. So this is why you might have heard that this period of development is so critical. Um, a lot of this will come from your parents, your caregivers, the people who are around you, and also media and stuff like that, but mostly from your parents and your family. So that is when you're, again, developing your personal stories, your feelings of safety. Um, and Dr. Gabor Mate will go back as far as even saying like this can develop when you're a baby crying and attachment styles, like did your parents, and this is no judgment to anyone's parents, We, they were all doing their best, but, um, I can assume that, that, uh, but anyways, um, if you were left to cry your way to sleep versus if you were soothed, if you were crying in the crib, those can both lead to different ways of going about the world. And this can lead into, uh, different traumas. And so when I say the term trauma, um, and this again is not to negate anybody's experience of real shitty traumatic things, excuse my language that happen in this world, but but just to say that the nervous system doesn't really know. The subconscious is very, very primal, especially in those young ages when it is being programmed like that. So for example, if you're left to cry, you might learn that nobody cares about me and I need to learn how to self-soothe in this world. Um, and that could, depending on how the rest of the child's life develops, could lead into a story that could feed into adulthood. And, you know, I assume if you're, if you're here, you've heard at least about this in some capacity. So that's the personal subconscious here. You can also extend that into a line of thinking into the familial and ancestral lineages. So what came in your DNA from 
the people before you, their experiences, their traumas, was that written into some informational somewhere into their DNA or their field and passed on to you as their ancestor? So basically our subconscious is our nervous system's way of understanding how to keep us safe and how to keep us alive in this world, which is why it's so very primal. Am I going to live or am I going to die? And that's why these stories that get um, imprinted into our nervous systems growing up are so important because that's when we're developing and trying to figure out this world and understanding like, is this place safe? Do I have to be on my guard? Um, and if you've ever done something like this, if you've ever been to therapy, a lot of it is understanding and going back to when these belief systems were formed and then reprogramming them perhaps. So there's also the idea of, uh, of that collective unconscious. So that family, that ancestry that bridges the gap between our personal stories and our upbringing and that collective subconscious, subconscious, which is the knowing that exists in all of humanity. So for example, humanity and sorry, not humanity, just the world at large, the universe. So like, for example, a liver cell in your body, a little embryo developing, how does it know to become a liver cell? That information has to exist somewhere and come from somewhere, whether it be an environmental cue or an energy sequence or something we don't know about yet. Um, that information exists somewhere. How do birds and animals know how to, to follow the exact migratory pattern that they have? Even if they haven't grown up around a herd, they still instinctually know where to go, how to get there. These are all things that we could query exists in this field, this collective subconscious knowing. Now, even in quantum physics and super string theory, which is as modern science as it gets now, we're starting to come back full circle and realize that in order to explain the existence of how everything is, we have to have what they call a morphogenic field, which is something where everything exists, where information lies. Okay? So, I'm, I feel like I'm sitting here kind of explaining that intuitive knowing, just tune into it, that there does exist a field of information, of energy, of science, whatever you want to call it, that people can tap into on a primal level. Now, part of our big conscious brain evolution has, and many other things that I won't go into, have disconnected us from our ability to tap into this subconscious. But we're starting to get it back, which is why, coming back, you've probably heard about it before. Zen monks can tap into it. Really powerful meditators can tap into it. Our superheroes and psychic people that we watch on TV, they have the power to tap into it whether you know it or not. Some of the shamans down in, um, in Peru and Central South America know how to do it. Um, certain plant medicines like hallucinogenics, LSD, psilocybin, those ayahuasca, those can induce that state. So, so this concept of the subconscious field, the collective, also exists in different ways of understanding. So Carl Jung popularized the theory of archetypes. So that's kind of just like different characters, essentially, the hero's journey. Um, really literally different characters. In a lot of Na Native American indigenous traditions, they'll use animal medicine. So animals to represent different ideas. In Hinduism and a lot of yogic traditions, they'll use uh, goddesses or gods, different deity deities to represent these different archetypes or ideas of energies or character characteristics. And that's another way of looking at the collective subconscious is just like the resonance behind something. Um, okay, so I'm going to talk about f four of the different ways, the different tools that might resonate with you that you can actually use to start to connect with this. Now, we're all different. Some people are going to resonate more with, again, shamanism or yoga or science or all of the above. But my intention is to help you bridge the gap between some of these science and traditional ideas so you can really understand they're the same thing, just with a different tool. So one thing I do want to talk about quickly first is gut health. Now, gut health is so important. And I'm not going to talk in this video about how to heal your gut. That's a different topic for a different day, but I do encourage you to pay attention to that. And again, the reason is the vagus nerve. 
a huge topic, which I will talk about at another time, but the vagus nerve is one of the main nervous system pathways in the body that regulates the um, parasympathetic, the rest and digest system, to the, to the sympathetic, which is like the fight or flight system. Now, the subconscious mind, it, what it has to do with this is because this vagus nerve helps write the story of am I alive or am I going to die? And it works in conjunction with uh, our subconscious to tell us if we're going to, our bodies, if it thinks it's going to live or die. So what I'm trying to say is 90% of the information that runs between our brain and our gut goes through, or goes through this nervous system, this nerve specifically, and it's running from our gut to our brain. Now what that means is most of the information that we're gathering from the outer world, our foods, the air we breathe, the microbes in our gut, that's all being transmitted into our central nervous system. What's interesting is though, here we don't have a way of understanding this information cognitively. So this is where the terms like your gut instinct or go with your gut come from is because that intuitive hit we get from like our gut is a knowing. It's information from the world and a really strong presence being inputted into our nervous system, a lot of information, but our brains don't know how to speak it. So it's like we're sitting in a room filled with people speaking a different language, all really great information and great life hacks, but we can't hear any of it because we don't speak the language. So that's kind of our our conscious brain sitting up here just looking um, at this, some of this information running past is we don't have any access to it. And so that's another way of looking at that collective subconscious. Um, could it be a, a biological perspective? Could it be just information from micro, the microbiome and the world around us? Uh, and we just don't have the tools to tap into that frequency? Absolutely, take your pick. So let's actually go into some of these techniques and tools. So the first one I want to talk about is something called the Silva Mind Method or hypnosis. Um, they're not exactly exclusively the same thing, but I am going to group them together here in this conversation for sake of understanding. So from this, I want to bring up neuroscience and the brain again, and, then, and um, specifically the electrical frequencies that our brain runs on. So as we understand it right now, or as we describe it, there are four, four different bands of frequencies. Delta, which is when our brain waves are larger and, um, high, and, um, uh, oh my gosh, I can't even talk right now, <laughs> larger and slower. And so this, these Delta waves are going to be present when we're sleeping. So when our brain's asleep, that's the electrical firing pattern. Now, when we're awake, we're going to be in beta when we're, uh, when we're thinking, when we're studying, when we're running around, we're going to be in beta. And these are shorter, faster waves. And when we're in, and then there's also states called alpha and theta wave. Now, these are the elusive states that we are in when we're in flow state or uh, if you're a monk deep in meditation. This is the state, they say, where the magic happens. So again, with Dr. J Joe Dispenza and Bruce Lipton, if you're talking about manifesting or receiving information or receiving downloads, you're likely in a theta or alpha wave state of brain because this is where you're able to connect to that field, that subconscious. And when your brain is firing in a way that it's able to um, <clears throat> sync with your nervous system into a different state of, of consciousness, somewhere between um, awake and asleep. So again, you'll be likely in alpha or theta wave when you're in that place just before you fall asleep or right after you wake up. So this is also a really powerful time to do meditation, to do manifestation work, to do some of this work that I'm going to talk about right now because you're in that alpha wave state. So the Silva mind method and hypnosis. Jose Silva was a electrician in the 60s that figured out basically this correlation between brainwave uh, electrical waves and states of consciousness. So from there, there's been many different methods of hypnosis, meditation that have come from it. But basically what you're doing is trying to induce the brain into a alpha or theta wave state. And then from there, use specific active visualization techniques to program 
um, different outcomes, different healing outcomes, different abundance outcomes, pattern, um, habit outcomes when you're in a different brainwave state. One that is more mm, akin to that subconscious primal story writing way of being. So that's how hypnosis works is it's actually going into the subconscious and rewriting that story that was originally placed there. So same with Silva mind method. Now in this video, I'm not going to teach you how to do these techniques because that is a whole different topic. Uh, I want to teach you about them, that, this, that the science behind some of them, that it does exist. And then if you want to learn more about it, I encourage you to check out my course Beyond Medicine, Healing with Neuroscience, where I go through each of these techniques and how to do them at home. So number one, using Silva Mind Method or hypnosis techniques to induce a state of theta or alpha wave brainwave activity using meditation and using... Um, different visualizations so usually this involves you if you're the participant uh, finding a comfortable space putting on headphones and listening and doing an active style meditation which is one where you're you're not sitting there watching your thoughts that's more passive you're sitting there creating your thoughts you're thinking you're visualizing things so that's um that's what hypnosis is the second one I want to talk about is also based in neuroscience and modern science and it's more of using frequency and acoustics to get your brain into a state. Um, and then once you're in that alpha or theta wave state, again using um, different things to rewrite the codes that are in your nervous system. So maybe you've heard of binaural beats. Binaural beats essentially are um, using frequencies. I'm not going to get into too much of the science here, but using frequencies to induce that theta or alpha or delta wave brain pattern in your brain, in your mind. So that would look like putting on headphones um, and just listening and then doing some deep breathing, doing some other activities that would help induce that parasympathetic state. And then hopefully you will get into alpha or theta wave. And then from there, you could maybe implement some other techniques like some visualizations, because once you're in alpha or in theta, you have the, the ability to do whatever you want. That's where the magic sweet spot is. Okay, so the second one is using um, frequency. So things like binaural beats. Things like light, red light. Um, there's a whole lot of science now about uh, using different light therapies to induce states of relaxation and anxiety. And then also something called uh, SSP, Safe and Sound Protocol, which was developed by Dr. Stephen Porges. And it has to do with filtering, filter, uh, filtering out certain frequencies in music and leaving in certain ones that can help feed back into the nervous system a feeling of safety. So these are all like really high level science um, science techniques that are interfacing between neuroscience, the way the brain functions, biology, using computers to filter out different frequencies and light therapy, uh, which is all so, so interesting, right? Because if we're thinking about frequencies, we're often, or I, you know, before I understood this, would just, some people could roll their eyes and be like, what even is this? But actually, there's a whole lot of science. The whole world is just frequencies and our eyes can understand a certain band like this, and our ears can understand another band. And maybe you can hear this great garbage truck behind me right now. So I'm gonna pause and come back in a second. The third technique that I'm gonna talk about is to flip away from the modern science and into some of the yogic science. So this is a very, very ancient, ancient way of understanding the world, but it's really interesting. This year I've been studying very deeply a lot of the old Hindu yogic scriptures, and they're basically quantum physics. Like, it's even the same language they use. It's very, uh, it's very, very interesting. So when I talk about this moving away from science, it's actually also kind of moving towards because they're they're both coming full circle and that's again the point of this video is to help us realize um, all of these techniques are valid and we all have different tools and ways of understanding and one might resonate more with you but it's all the same so I want to talk about Shakti Nidra which is a meditation again I will say a active form of meditation that you are going, meaning that you are lying in a comfortable position and you'll have someone or you'll be listening to someone walk you through a Shakti Nidra meditation. 
um, and you'll be journeying in your mind. And the idea, again, is to get you into uh, different languages used, but into a state where you're receptive and you're able to connect with those subconscious fields, those thoughts. And when you're in this state, you're able to download things, so you're able to receive information, and you're also able to input information in. So that will be, again, a topic for another time. But um, what Shakti Nidra is, is again, you'll be lying in a meditation, and someone will walk you through um, a specific way to get into that state. So it involves something called rotation of consciousness, which is focusing on different parts of the body in a specific order. Um, this also actually goes back to a neuro neuroscientific basis as well because it's crossing the body, which if you've ever heard of EMDR, um, uses crossing the body to and using these like eyes. And this is again a nervous system thing um, to help cross the corpus callosum. And it's like, think of it as a windshield wiper. So when you're doing activities, whether that be like even just touching different sides of your body like this, um, there's a technique called butterfly hug, which is literally doing that alternating sides of your body is because your nervous system kind of treats that as a reset and so that's some of the neuroscience behind this rotation of consciousness activity inside the shakti nidra med meditation is to help wi wipe the body of that by using visualizing different points across the body and then after that it moves into a more specific techniques of uh, reprogramming so that's uh, another really cool option if that sounds like it resonates with you. It's uh, Shakti Nidra is really amazing if you have trouble sleeping and if you're like a highly anxious, unfocused person. So it's really, really helpful um, in the evening, again, for insomnia to put you into that state of receiving so you can receive deep rest. If you've ever done Shakti Nidra, I know it, they say that like a half an hour Nidra meditation is akin to like five hours of deep rest and I, I feel like it when I do them. I definitely come out feeling much more uh, refreshed. So check that one out. That's another way to tap into your subconscious. And the last one I'm going to talk about is the more fun, um, in my opinion, they're all, they're all really fun, but the more um, animated and also more elusive one. And so that's shamanic journeying. So this is using a drum. Um, so this is found in many indigenous cultures, whether that be South America, Central America, um, North America, the Pacific Northwest, but all have many, many versions of this. And essentially it's using a drum to mimic a heartbeat. So drum is a, is a rhythm is a very, very primal thing again for our nervous systems as we entrain to rhythm um, because it's the very foundation of our body. I think our heartbeat. And so it's using the drum to induce induce that state of consciousness so again shamanic drumming in some cultures you can actually induce psychosis with the drum patterns so we're not trying to do that right now on quite that level but we are using the drum beat to bring you into a state of theta and alpha and in shamanic journeying it's using more archetypes so uh, with shakti nidra for example we were doing a visualization of a body scan and in shamanic journeying, we're actually going on a journey. So instead of scanning the body, we're like going down a river and we're going down a tree. We're going to the center of the world to visit one of the lords of the underworld. And once we're in the underworld, that's where we receive that information. Um, and so that's a shamanic journey. Again, no drugs involved. <laughs> You're just literally lying and meditating. However, again, all of these different methods will require a different specific skill set. Um, to do, you know, I've been trained in all of them, but it's it's honestly not that um, common to have someone be able to walk you through a mind method, a hypnosis meditation, a shamanic journey, um, a yoga nidra, or whatever. But what I'm trying to say is, all of these techniques are super valid. All of them will help you reprogram your subconscious mind and tap into that healing power. They're all doing the same thing, but they're all just going from a different perspective and understanding and this goes back to my original point of that all has to do with, from our age of zero to seven when we're being programmed these stories if you're um, in a tribe in, in Peru and the Quiero mountain people then likely you have the belief that you're going to the underworld 
Um, maybe you have now this Western understanding of the subconscious, maybe you don't. But you tie the two together and you realize that they're the same thing. The archetypes of Freud are the same as the Native American animal archetypes, are the same as the color and the sound and the frequency and whatever of the modern science realm. So it's all the same. It's all beautiful. Pick one that resonates with you and, and um, go from there. And I hope you learned something. I hope this opened up your mind. If you're interested in learning how to do these techniques, Silva Mind Method, Shakti Nidra, Shamanic Journeying, um, and the SSP Neuroacoustics, please, please check out my foundational signature immersive experience online, Beyond Medicine. It will help you learn how to tap into your healing powers. I know when I was going through topical steroid withdrawal, I was doing all of the things that I thought I could with diet and supplements, but the moments in between when I was just waiting, I wasn't utilizing my mindset and I wasn't utilizing these tools. And then when I did, when I started learning them, I think that's what really changed my trajectory for healing. So. Again, please check out um, that course. Bruce Lipton, Dr. Joe Dispenza are amazing resources as well if you're looking for more of the science behind how this works and how you can use it. And I would love to have you in the community. Please join my Substack, join my uh, YouTube channel, and leave your comments below. My name is Dr. Kayla Clark. Have an amazing day.